today's review is going to be talking about um, the definition of derivative. So it has been a while. And so we are going to look at it, of course, graphically, numerically, and analytically, how it's derived. And understand that derivative is an instantaneous rate of change. And do you remember that derivatives came from limits? It was the limits of the difference between the rate of average rate of change as it approached zero. So let's take a look at this definition. So let's say we have a function. So our function is here in blue, y equals f of x. It sort of looks parabolic, okay? And we want to find the, the derivative at this point p. So you notice p is defined as the change in x is a, and then the output would be f of a. Now, in order to find the instantaneous rate of change, we have to first start off with what we know. And we know how to find the average rate of change. So let's say I look at another point q, where q is moved over to the right, some h units, and then its output would be f of a plus h. So we know that the average rate of change, or we might call that slope, would be then we would subtract the y values of the q. Okay, so we would have the f of a plus h, that's the y value of the q, subtract it from the y value of the p, f of a, all over the subtraction of the x values, which would be a plus h, which is the first x value of q, minus the x value of p, which would be a. So you notice then that would take us to f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Now that is the function for slope, the average rate of change. But I don't want the average rate of change. I want the instantaneous rate of change. So what I want to do is I want to take this slope and I want to decrease it and decrease it and decrease it so that there is no difference between those points so I get the instantaneous rate of change. So I want to find out, well, as h, that distance between the two points, approaches zero, what is that slope? So there we have the definition of a derivative when we are looking at those two points. So then you can see on the slide here, the slope, the derivative, the instantaneous rate of change as h approaches zero will be f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Or, if you're looking at it as the derivative at a specific point a, you would take the f of x, subtract the y value at f of a, and then subtract the x values, x minus a. So now let's look at an example to see if you recall this, because you may have forgotten a little bit. But, before we go any further, remember that a function is dip, whoa, sorry about that, forgot to press my highlighter, is differentiable if it has a derivative anywhere in its domain. So it must be continuous and smooth. Functions on closed intervals must have a one-sided derivative at their endpoint. There you go, folks. Now, let's do some calculations here. So let's say we're given the function x squared plus 3x. Now, using the definition for derivative, we are going to find the derivative of this function. Okay, so as h approaches 0. So the limit as h approaches 0, and now it's going to be, um, we're going to be looking at x plus h. So the function is x squared, so I'm going to have x plus h squared. And then it's plus 3x, so plus 3 times x plus h. And then we're going to subtract that from the function itself, x squared plus 3x. Whoa, you can't really see that 3, can you? All over h. You know, let's do some algebra and let's simplify things here and see what we come up with. So we'd have x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 3x plus 3h, and then it would be minus x squared minus 3x all over h. Now we're going to do some simplification. We notice we have an x squared minus an x squared there. Okay, anything else that can reduce? Ooh, we have the plus 3x, the minus 3x. Nice going. So now we notice we have three terms left, and they all have an h in common. So let's factor out the h. So we're going to have h times 2x plus h plus 3 all over h. Well, the h is reduced. And notice we're looking at this as h approaches 0. So if h approaches 0, then we will be left with 2x plus 3 is the definition of derivative. And knowing the shortcuts, we can see that is correct. Now what if we use the other definition of derivative? Now, this is looking specifically as the limit approaches a derivative at a point, a value a. 
So we're going to have f of x, which is x squared plus 3x, subtracting f of a. So we're going to put that point, a, whatever that might be, into the f of x function. Limit as x approaches a all over x minus a. Okay, let's do some algebra again here. So now we have x squared plus 3x minus a squared minus 3a all over x minus a as the limit of x approaches a. Okay, now I'm kind of seeing some patterns here. I want to look for an x minus a so I can reduce those. So if I put the x squared minus a squared together, and then I have a 3x minus 3a all over x minus a, and of course the limit as x approaches a, I can see now a common factor of the x minus a, because we would have x minus a times x plus a, right, right, plus, and we can see here if we factor out a 3, x minus a, oh, nice, nice, all over x minus a, the limit as x approaches a, woohoo! Okay, moving right along, we they have an x minus a in common, so the x minus a, factor that out, and we'd be left with, um, let's see, we have um, x plus a, plus 3. Great. So that x minus a in the numerator and denominator will reduce. Okay. And so now as x approaches a then, so we'll replace x with a. So now we have a plus a, so we end up with 2a plus 3. So whatever that specific point is that we're approaching, we could substitute that in and find the derivative at a point. Wow. Do you remember all this stuff? I know. Seems like a while, doesn't it? So number 2, Find the value of the limit given this definition. So basically, they are giving you the definition of a derivative in its notation form. And you have to try to figure out, well, which definition am I looking at? Well, I can see here, it looks very clearly like it's a function minus a function evaluated at the point pi. And then I have x minus that point pi, which is a. So, okay, so it looks like we're using this definition. The limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a, right? And the point a is pi. And what is the function? Well, the function is cosine of x. So we want to find out then what is the derivative of this function at the point pi, okay? So we know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then the derivative, when I'm looking specifically at the point, at point pi, is negative sine of pi. Well, sine of pi is zero, so it is just going to be zero. So the answer is A. Woohoo! I'm feeling good. Feeling the love going on here. Okay, now what about this problem? Ooh, which definition of derivative am I using? Well, I can see clearly the x plus h there. So I'm thinking it's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so let's define, define the key components. So f of x is tangent of 2x. Now this is the definition of a derivative. So we, what, we're not looking at it at a specific point. So my result is going to be a function, the derivative function. So let's take the derivative of this function. So we know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. Now this is chain rule, right folks? So I took the derivative of tangent, now let's take the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So it's going to be 2 secant squared 2x, okay? Um, and the last one then is you would have to find the limit as x approaches e. Like, wow, that's a hard limit to find. But actually, isn't this just the definition of a derivative? Because if we look at it, it looks like we're looking at a point as x approaches e. So you have to know these definitions like the back of your hand, right? Because if you know the definition, then you can match up the parts and find the answer. So in this problem, my function is the natural log of x. So take the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x, and then we want to find that at e. So the answer would be that derivative at the point e is 1 over e. Woo! Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, is that it? Oh, just remember that when we're looking at a derivative, we are assuming it implies, because the definition derivative says it's in a definition, it will be continuous. So um, the points where a derivative will not exist is at the corner, at the cusp, 
and at a vertical tangent, okay? And of course, it's kind of obvious it won't occur at a point of discontinuity because it can't be a derivative if it's discontinuous. Um, and I think that might be it for now, okay? So make sure that you practice your multiple choice questions and get solid on this definition of derivatives.